Hi everybody, this is Deborah with Deborah on the Go, and today I'm going to talk to you about what gear I took on the West Coast Trail. I just recently got off the West Coast Trail a couple weeks ago, and I had a few requests to do a gear video on what I took in my pack. If you haven't watched my videos on the West Coast Trail, please do that. I did a vlog for every day, and I'm also going to be putting out um, a one overall video for the journey. So make sure that you check that out. At the same time, hit the subscribe button and make sure to click on the bell so that you get notifications when I have new videos out. All right, let's get into it. And we're gonna start with the big three. All right, so starting with my pack, if you've watched my videos, you've seen this before. I did a whole video on this pack. This is the ULA Catalyst. It's a 75 liter pack and is rated for up to about 40 pounds. It is semi-waterproof, so I didn't need to bring, um, I didn't need to bring a rain cover. However, I do use a contractor bag on the inside to keep things dry. What do you think of my bag, Zoe? You like it, huh? <laughs> for my tent, I use the Big Agnes Copper Spur UL2. I use the UL2 because I like the extra space of having a two-person tent. And moving on to my sleeping bag, I use the Sea to Summit Altitude AT2. It is an ultra dry down 750 loft sleeping bag. This bag is comfort rated to minus 10 Celsius. And so far I haven't had a cold night in it. I absolutely love this sleeping bag and all the extra features that come with it. For my pillow, I use the Sea to Summit Eros Down Pillow. This is the large one. Um, I've used several different pillows and this seems to be the best so far. It fits perfectly in the hood of my sleeping bag so it stays in there. It's nice and secure and doesn't... Uh, push away on me. It's got a nice soft down covering on the top and on the back it's got kind of a nice almost flannel cottony feel to it. Really love this sleeping pillow. All right my sleeping pad is the Big Agnes Q-Core SLX insulated sleeping pad. It is a 20 by 72 and I believe it's rated had around a five, between four and five. Um, again, I find this to be a really nice um, sleeping pad. It is a little on the narrow side, but it is um, thick. It's probably about three to four inches thick when um, blown up, which I appreciate because I am a side sleeper, so my hips never touch the ground on this one. I also like that it comes with the airbag, so you use this bag to blow it up and I use a generic cotton sleeping bag liner and I actually don't use this to as a sleeping bag liner I use this to line my air mattress so I once I blow my air mattress up I stick it inside this liner and it just keeps the mattress from making that awful squeaking noise between the mattress and the tent floor <laughs> I absolutely cannot stand that sound and so this eliminates that sound completely. An additional sleeping system luxury item that I have is this nice soft down blanket. Um, it weighs practically nothing and it's just a generic brand. I got it off of Amazon, um, but I absolutely love it. On um, I do a lot of backpacking in the Rockies and out there it can get quite chilly at night so I carry this with me just to protect me from that added chill. I would rather have this on me than be sleeping in my puff jacket and my rain gear. So this is an added luxury that I am willing to take. Um, like I said it doesn't really weigh anything and it adds a lot of extra warmth. Alright let's go over my cook system. I carry all of my food in the z packs food bag i think this is the large size um, i love how lightweight it is and how durable it is plus it's a little bit waterproof then i have a self-made uh, cozy 
I put all of my dehydrated food in um, medium-sized freezer bags instead of the packaging they come with because I find it's a lot lighter and more efficient. And so I use this cozy to help insulate while it cooks. So then I have a Nature Hike uh, pot. I believe this is a, I don't think it's quite a one liter pot. I don't use a whole lot of water when I cook and I have a lid from a different cook set that I use uh, if it's pretty well on top. <laughs> All right, moving on to the small stuff. So I carry this little measuring cup with me. Um, it again doesn't really weigh anything, but I like to know how much water I'm putting into things. So I use that. I've got a little torch lighter. I've got my Tokes spork. I've got a little Norwex cloth that I use just to wipe things down. And I use the Primus uh, stove. Um, this is definitely bigger and weighs more than the MSR Pocket Rocket or even just the cheap Amazon stoves that you get. But I did have a cheap Amazon stove and I didn't like how flimsy it was. This is nice and solid. Um, it doesn't come apart, so, you know, for packing purposes, it does take up more room, but I know that my pot is secure on it and that the arms aren't going to drop my, my pot. Next, I carry a fuel can for my stove. This is my cold soaking jar. Um, for lunch, I often have couscous with um, dried mushrooms in it. So I use this jar to cold soak my lunch. And if I decide that I want to have a hot chocolate or a tea at night, I can also use this um, as my mug. All right, and this is my lunch bag. So every morning I would take what I was going to have for lunch and snacks out of my big food bag and I would put it in this and have it in a more accessible location throughout the day. And finally, my water filter. I carry the one liter um, Catadine Be Free. I absolutely love this. It is so easy to use. It's so convenient and it, you know, it folds up pretty small. So it's light. It doesn't take up a lot of room. Um, I've had more success with this water filter than I did when I was using my Sawyer. Um, so I am definitely a be free girl. Love this filter. All right, moving on to clothes. So for the West Coast Trail, I had taken this buff and my outdoor research sun hat and it wasn't even sunny enough to wear my sun hat. <laughs> I could have left this behind. I wore my buff every day instead. Um, I suppose I could have wore this um, on the rainy days, um, but I, we didn't have any true rainy days, so I didn't feel like I needed any rain protection in that way. All right, for rain gear, I wear these green rain pants from Mech. Um, I don't think, I don't even know if they have a name <laughs> to them. So they're just like a generic Mech brand, but they do the trick. And I wear this Columbia Titanium Rain Jacket. Um, I absolutely love this jacket so far. Doesn't seem to wet out very quickly, um, and it's nice and light. For my puffy, I wear the Arcteryx Adam, I believe this is the SL hoodie. It's a synthetic hoodie rather than being down. Um, it's super light and super warm um, and I like the fact that it being synthetic if it was to get wet it would still keep me warm whereas my down puffy wouldn't be so for the West Coast Trail being that it is a little wetter there I chose to take my synthetic hoodie all right let's talk about socks and underwear <laughs> so I took two pairs of darn tough socks these are the, I believe they're called the crew socks, so they come up past the ankle, kind of mid-calf, just under mid-calf. For underwear, I had two pairs of Under Armour um, underwear, and I just switched them out. And for bras, I took two Zaya Bomber bras, 
Um, I would wear one during the day while we were hiking and the other one once we got to camp um, and during the evening. All right, sleepwear. <laughs> so I brought a cotton tank top, just a nice cotton thing that I could wear on a warm night. I did actually wear this for the first uh, two nights on trail, um, just with a, a pair of shorts. Um, because it was quite warm out and my sleeping bag is really warm. I also brought this Hallie Hansen um, merino wool shirt. I wore this in the evenings when it was cool out and I also wore it to bed for the last uh, three nights on trail. And then I have these just some generic thermals that I wore um, to bed or in the evenings under my rain pants. So I wore mountain hardware shorts, these in black, um, they have pockets. I actually can't remember the exact, um, what the style is called, um, but they're just really comfortable uh, shorts to be hiking in. And on the right, these are Zaya light and tight pocket capris in navy. And I ended up wearing these for the majority of the time. Um, and absolutely loved them. They held up so well. There was no sagging, no, <laughs> for every fall and snag and scratch I took, um, these came out totally unscathed. All right, I had three choices in tops. Normally I wouldn't bring so many clothes, but when we left home, the trail was supposed to be, you know, 20 to 25 degrees and sunny the whole time. And by the time we got there, it was supposed to be between 13 and 15 and rainy the whole time. <laughs> so we weren't sure what to bring as far as clothes, so I brought a little bit of everything. <laughs> so we'll start with the tank top. This is a Zaya copper charged tank. I actually did wear this every day, either on its own or under one of the other two shirts. I brought a Columbia sun shirt. Um, this is a short sleeve button up. Um, I ended up only wearing this for the first couple of days um, and then I switched to my outdoor research sun shirt. <laughs> Sorry it's so wrinkly. <laughs> um, but this is a long sleeved snap button shirt. Um, I really appreciate the snaps and I do like how the sleeves can be long or short. I did wear them short a lot. Um, and it was just a bit of a longer shirt, so it just felt nicer under my backpack. Um, so I did defer to the tank top and the blue outdoor research shirt more than my Columbia shirt. Other clothing items worn were my purple buff, which I would wear at night to keep my head warm. Sometimes I'd wear that to bed. And I had a pair of gloves. These are from Costco. They are fantastic. And I cannot find them now, but I also brought a pair of gardening gloves to use on the ladders and cable cars um, when they were wet. All right, so for my feet, while we were hiking, I wore my Hoka 1-1 Speed Goat. Um, these are the waterproof mid boots. Um, absolutely loved these for how the trail was this year. I didn't feel I needed um, big boots because by the time we went in July the mud was for the most part dried up um, but I absolutely loved the grip. You can see I have not washed them since the trip <laughs> but the Hoka's have amazing grip and amazing cushioning so my feet felt pretty good in these. I also wore my Dirty Girl Gators. These are the Paisley pattern. Um, again, because the mud was mostly dried up by the time we got there, I didn't feel the need for full length gators um, for mud purposes, because there really wasn't much mud. Um, but I really liked these for keeping the sand out of my shoes on the beach. Um, the Crocs. I took intending to be as camp shoes and for <laughs> camp being on rocky pebbly beaches I do not recommend taking crocs they were awful um, they do not do anything to keep 
sand and rocks out, but they do everything they can to keep them in. They were absolutely terrible. Do not recommend taking Crocs as camp shoes for beach hiking <laughs> or beach camping. Um, I ended up wearing my water shoes as my camp shoes for the most part um, because they kept the pebbles out. Um, not that they were comfortable because they really weren't for camp shoes. If I were to go again, I would take just a pair of like Skecher walk shoes. They would, for that purpose, they would be much more suitable. Um, I did take the water shoes anticipating having to do some river crossings. Um, but the only one we had to take our shoes off was at Carmana, and I ended up going barefoot. I didn't even wear these. <laughs> so I'm glad I brought them because I wore them as camp shoes. But if I were to do this trail again, in the conditions that we had, I would leave both of these behind and just take my Skechers instead. And I'm going to include my poles here since I did technically wear them for the majority of the time. The only time I didn't really have them in my hands was going up the ladders. Uh, so these are the black diamond poles. Um, just got them just before this trip. I normally use a Canadian tire brand, but I thought I would upgrade and I'm really glad that I did. Absolutely love these poles. I think I will keep using them. All right, for electronics and electronic accessories, I had two little tripods. This one was for my phone. It is a selfie tripod um, with a Bluetooth remote, so I was able to set up the camera and walk away from it and take pictures and video. Um, and I appreciate the, um, the selfie stick aspect of it as well. This one is just a tripod. Um, it's nothing fancy. It does kind of have the bendable legs so you can kind of mold it to whatever you're setting it up on. I used this um, for my Osmo camera, which is what I take the majority of my filming on. So this one was specifically for my Osmo. This one was for my phone. I also carried my Garmin uh, InReach Explorer Plus. Absolutely love this thing. I highly recommend everybody have one. I have my battery chart, my battery banks. And by plural, yes, I did take two. Um, this is a pocket juice from Costco and it does about six charges of a phone fairly well. But this trip I had my phone my watch, my Garmin, and my Osmo, which I knew everything would be needed to be charged, if not every night, kind of every other night. So I purchased this power bank just before going on this trip and I hadn't had a chance to test it out yet um, to see how many charges I could get out of it. Um, I got it off of Amazon and I'm sorry, I don't remember the brand name, but it did say I should get um, eight to 10 charges out of it. So, in the end, I could have gotten away with just this power bank. It did charge my phone and my Osmo every night as well as it charged my Garmin. Um, so I could have got away with just the one, but because I had never used it before, I thought it was better to take two than just one. And I have all my charging cords. I also had, uh, of course, the cords for my, my phone and my watch, and I also had a head set of headphones with me. I kept all of these things in this little Z-Pax bag. This is actually considered the tablet bag, but I find it, uh, it fits all these things perfectly and keeps them dry because it is a Z-Pax Dyneema material. Okay, then I also had uh, my iPhone 11. This is what I took all of my pictures and like maybe 2% of videos on. If I needed to zoom in on anything, I would uh, whip out that phone. And this is my Fitbit watch. Um, I actually found that after the six days of hiking, I still had little under 50% charge left on it. So it actually did really, really well charge-wise. And of course, can't forget my Osmo camera, which I film practically everything on. Again, unless I need to zoom in on something or film it, <laughs> I use for my DJI Osmo Pocket camera. 
um, for my purposes and how I'm getting into the vlogging style of videos. I absolutely love this thing. It takes gr really great quality pictures for what it is, and it is a video and a camera. Um, yeah, I've been using this for two years now and absolutely love it. All right, moving on to miscellaneous items and toiletries. <laughs> All right, let's start over here. So this is my bear spray. This is the bag I keep my bear spray in. So I got my bear can. I got a knife, some hauls. <laughs> um, this is my first aid bag. So I've got KT tape, I've got Benadryl, um, you know, Tylenol, blister band-aids, um, some bug bite relief. Um, I've got a couple burn pads in here, regular um, band-aids and some repair kits, um, some extra guidelines and like sleeping bag or sleeping pad repair. So it's a repair slash first aid bag. Then I have a little bottle of insect repellent. This is lotion, which works great unless you want it on your clothes, <laughs> in which case it's not so great. <laughs> um, this is my toiletry bag. This is a, again, it's from z -Packs. It's just a small dry bag. This is another z -Packs bag. This is their phone bag, but I actually use it to carry things that I'm not going to need every day. Um, necessarily so I would keep um, some first aid things in here some Kleenex stuff like that things that I didn't need on a daily basis so I didn't necessarily want them in my toiletry bag I would then keep all of my electronics and all these miscellaneous items plus my glasses case which I don't have out here in this z packs bag um, this actually comes with straps so you can wear it kind of like as a satchel um, but I took all of them off and just used it as a storage bag and stuck it inside the big pocket on the outside of my pack just to carry it contained all of these things all right so this is my basic toiletry <laughs> items um, I've got a small Advil bottle which normally I would just take in a plastic bag instead of the bottle I've got a couple Benadryls a small hand lotion bottle or container because I absolutely hate having dry hands. Um, this is moisturizer for my face and this is eye cream. I cannot go without those so I found the smallest bottles I could get. I just fill them up. They're, not, they're pretty light. I've got a toothbrush and I use, when I'm backpacking, I use the um, toothpaste pills. I guess they're called rather than taking tubes of toothpaste these are much lighter they take up less space and you really only need to take as many as you need I've got these are those compressed cloths I used to take baby wipes but they are so heavy these are super super light and you just need a few drops of water and they moisten up and roll out into a nice big face cloth type towel love these and pro tip, once you've used them on your face or whatever, if you let them dry, you can cut them half and use them as toilet paper. <laughs> I've got earplugs just in case I need them at night. And I've got a brush and a, this is a brush mirror combo. Um, so it's nice and little. I've got a lip balm, can't go without that. And my luxury item, oh, my luxury item carries my hair ties. Um, but my luxury item is mascara. It is it's the only piece of actual makeup that I will take on trail because I have such blonde eyelashes. I look like a tired turtle if I don't have mascara on. And I'm not putting videos out there looking like a tired turtle. <laughs> Alright, and this is my shit kit bag. This is from Chicken Tramper. And I actually just got this, so I'll show you. This contains all of my um, shit kit materials. Let me show you. Okay, so this is my trowel, which I keep in this pocket here. I keep my toilet paper in this plastic bag along with hand sanitizer. So, and that fits in here in the shit kit bag. And then inside the shit kit bag,
This is where you would keep your used toilet paper. If you were in an area where you need to use leave no trace practices. Um, obviously on the West Coast Trail it doesn't really apply because there are pit toilets, but if you're in an area where there isn't, that's where you would store your used toilet paper. One last miscellaneous, miscellaneous item was this pad. I used this as my sip pad and also kind of as a front entryway um, inside my tent just to have something to lean on that was a little softer than the ground. Um, so this was just a generic multi-purpose pad. So I think that covers everything that I had in my pack except for my food. And because I don't have any food prepared, I'm just going to tell you what I had in my food bag for every day. So we were there, out there for six days. So for breakfasts, I had a um, granola slash muesli mix that I put a little bit of um, powdered milk in and I would just keep it in a baggie and I would just put a little bit of water in there to get it wet and I would eat it just straight out of the bag. Um, for lunch, I would cold soak couscous. So every morning I would put some couscous and some dried mushrooms in my cold soak jar and fill it up with water. And by lunchtime it was ready to go. So at lunch I would add a mix of um, uh, nutritional yeast and Parmesan cheese and a little bit of olive oil for flavoring and um, good calories. So that would be my lunch every day. For supper, I kind of alternated between um, ramen with dried vegetables and some stir fry seasoning and um, actual backpacking meals. So I had a, just a few, I think I had three backpacking meals and two ramens that I had. And again, I put all of that in medium sized freezer bags rather than their original packaging. Um, and I use my cozy to cook with them. What I took for snacks to eat on the trail was a combination of Snickers bars, Eat More bars, protein bars um, by Nugo, and some licorice sticks, and I had some beef jerky and a few dried mangoes. And that is pretty much all I had for snacks every day. I also had a little baggie full of um, a variety of gummies, gummy worms, um, you know, gummy watermelons, that kind of thing, to have as dessert at night. And I found that you know, two or three of those was just, just satisfying enough that I didn't really need anything more than that. I also carried some Squincher's electrolyte drink powder. Um, I would have that after hiking all day. I would drink that with my supper. Um, I find I don't enjoy flavored water as I'm hiking, but I did really enjoy it to have with my dinner. I also brought some teas and some Crystal Light powder drinks that I didn't end up actually using. Well, everybody, I think that covers everything that I had in my pack. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I have daily videos posted of my trip on the West Coast Trail, so please make sure you check those out. If you haven't already subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell so that you get notifications when future videos get posted. All right, guys, thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time.